Well, g'day Curd Nerds. Those who have been watching the channel for a while would know that I make mistakes. And when I do, I show them on the channel as well. So this cheese that you're going to see, I'm actually going to call Lazarus Cabin. And the reason being, I managed to resurrect it and uh, from the dead, uh, as Lazarus was um, apparently says in the Bible, he was risen from the dead by Jesus. And it's cabin cheese, not cottage cheese, because that's what I was trying to make at the time. And I made a monumental mistake. Uh, and uh, yeah, you'll get to see that during the course of the video. Anyway, let me show you how I made Lazarus's cabin. So we're using some Inglenook Dairy unhomogenized milk, which is my preferred milk for cheese making in my area. The recipe started out with four litres of whole cow's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of mesophilic starter culture, quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of liquid rennet. I'm using single strength rennet here, and that's diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And I'll be using a saturated brine solution, a saturation of 18%. So I've just turned the heat on, and I'm heating up to roughly 21 degrees Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit. Now, in the next few frames, see if you can spot the mistake I made. So I've moved the uh, water bath to the side, and I've put the milk back on the burner that's still on. Here I was thinking it was turned off. Anyway, we'll see what the result of that is a little bit later. So, we're going to add the starter culture, the mesophilic starter culture, all over the top of the milk. Now, it called for a quarter of a teaspoon, so I'm using two sachets of Mad Millie uh, mesophilic starter culture, which is about an eighth of a teaspoon each. There we go. Sprinkle that all over the top. Lovely. And we're going to allow that to rehydrate once I remember where the lid is. Okay, five minutes it's going to take us to rehydrate the starter cultures. So the lid should go on. It didn't happen. Oh, okay, so they have rehydrated. And we're going to stir the culture into the milk now. Now remember that the target temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. And as I felt the side of the pot there, I thought, oh, well, I'll just measure the temperature again in case it crept up. And it says 28 degrees Celsius now. So with the burner on and me being oblivious to it um, still being there and heating the milk, I kept stirring. It didn't even dawn on me that the milk at 28 was too hot. I thought it was just from the ring. Anyway, so I proceeded to add the calcium chloride in a timely fashion and give that a good stir. Now the heat ring was on very, very low. It was You could just see the flame. And that was the problem. I couldn't see the flame. Maybe I need to get my eyes checked. Anyway, after stirring in the calcium chloride, I added the rennet solution and gave that a good stir through, no more than a minute. All the while being oblivious to the mistake that I'm making. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Okay, so take all your utensils out. Now cover this and allow the milk to set for 90 minutes. Now, so I've changed instructions now. We're heating it to 55 degrees Celsius. 
And as you can see there, mamma mia, what is wrong with my cheese? It has set indeed and it has expelled so much curds and whey. It was at about 55 degrees. So I thought, what the heck, I'll just cut the curds into 1.25 or quarter inch cubes. So I cut them uh, vertically with my curd knife. Kind of looks a bit like scrambled eggs. And I tried to cut them a little bit with the curd harp or curd cutter. Not so successful there. But still they are cut. So I decided to stir for a while. The heat's off now, okay? Definitely the heat is turned off. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I was cursing under my breath. Lucky we didn't have the uh, the main sound on. Anyway, so the temperature has uh, jumped up a little bit to 58 degrees Celsius. So that is rather high. So I decided to stir the curds for five minutes. And cut any large uh, cubes of curd that may be there. Still a fairly uh, scramble eggish sort of consistency, but I thought, well, let's see, what, what's the worst that could happen? I don't get cheese, I can just drain it off or something like that. So I decided now to uh, drain the uh, curds and whey through the uh, cheesecloth lined colander. So just chip, tipping that through gently so I don't um, fracture the curds. Not that I think they would fracture. They've been heated up so high that they've uh, got a pretty good skin on them. So I'm just going to move that to the other part of the sink. And uh, we drain that for an hour. Had a lot of whey in it uh, that hadn't drained out. So I thought, let's drain it out for an hour. So you can see most of the whey is gone now. So I'm just going to transfer the curds in the cheesecloth to a small cheese basket. This is the 800 gram basket that I sell on my website. And it was perfect size for this task. So I put the follower on and press it right down there. You can see that the whey that's coming out now is fairly cloudy. I mean you're losing a little bit of fat there. But I thought at this stage who cares. So I'm just pressing that at uh, about 10 kilograms which is 22 pounds for 30 minutes only. I knew I wouldn't be able to age this cheese because all of the, uh, the bacteria has been destroyed with the, uh, the high heat. So I decided to make it into a, a fresh cheese. So just a quick pressing there of 30 minutes. And then we're just going to take it out of the cheese press now. And we're going to turn the cheese, redress it, and then repress it again. So it has formed into a rudimentary shape. There we go. Turn that over now. And we're going to repress it, just pulling the cloth down so there's no marks on the side of the cheese. There we go. And we're going to press at the same pressure, so about 10 kilograms. 22 pounds for one hour this time so that the uh, the curds would close up, a, close up a little bit better. Beautiful. So after that hour I, I removed the cheese from the press. And it had formed fairly well. Um, not many marks. The rind was closed, so I was happy with that. Um, so I decided to put it into the brine for two hours and turning at the one hour mark just to make sure it was salted uh, evenly. So after it was brined, let's take it out of the brine and put it on a just a chopping board. Looks good, it's all solid. Oh, a bit fell off. So taste test. It tasted very nice actually. I thought this really surprised me, this little cheese. 
So there we go. Just going to air dry that now. Quick wash of the hands and out of frame go. There we go. Air dry that for 12 hours and turn that once. So I turned it at the 6 hour mark. So normally when I air dry now, I use one of these little umbrellas or food savers. Keeps any flies or dust off it. And there it is cut, 12 hours later. And you can eat it now, or you can keep it in the fridge for up to seven days. Very firm little texture. I had it with a pickle and some biscuits. And it did taste amazing. Beautiful salty little cheese. Um, really did... Uh, it exceeded my expectations for this mess so anyway i recovered a cheese back to gav so there you have it there was lazarus's cabin to name a cheese that's the name we gave it and thanks for the feedback on the uh, the community tab of the channel where i asked people what i should call this cheese uh, hopefully you'll be able to replicate it using the same instructions that i've just put out there and uh, you can make a nice a nice soft uh, fresh cheese that you can eat at home as well. Anyway, thanks for watching Curdenades. As always, don't forget that you can buy cheese making kits. For this one, I'd probably recommend the soft cheese making kit, uh, and you can buy that at littleringworkshops.com.au. You can also become a patron of the channel and uh, support it financially. Just have a look at the Patreon link down below in the description. Anyway, Curdenades, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.